Anglo Gold Ashanti started the Auditions Gold Jewelry Design Competition in 1999, which exists for the purpose of pushing the boundaries of jewelry design in important markets. If gold jewelry does not keep pace with global design trends and does not remain fashionable and relevant to consumers, people will just stop wearing it. So the idea behind auditions is to create an audition in gold through which designers present work to us in South Africa, in Brazil, in India, China and the Middle East. Give gold a new face, a sexy face and a face that a consumer will want to connect with going forward. This time we said, let's try and be more socially relevant. Let us try to cover broader ground in terms of both the entries we will get, the designs we will get, but also the kind of people to whom this collection can speak because it covers greater social ground. We went to Brainstorm because we were looking for a small agency which could deliver a unique product to us and, and work very closely with us. It's something that really excites us to be involved in an entire long process like branding the idea of gold, which this campaign is largely about. Gold is an amazing substance, it's, uh, it's more an idea, something that people uphold and wars have been fought about it and people have died and all sorts of stuff happen about gold. What we decided first of all was to come up with a theme which was more multifaceted than before. We came up with the theme Urban Tribes. Nowadays people are not as stratified according to the tribe or the class that they're born into but it's more voluntary, so that was exciting for us. People can choose a tribe, people choose a tribe to belong to, and that is who we wanted them to start designing gold jewelry pieces and accessories for. What was a natural creative evolution of the concept was to try and look at the urban tribes and turn it into something that would, that would inspire and sort of uh, resonate with the entrance and then potential people so there's more longevity to the idea. So we looked at the idea of, of superheroes and what does what are the, the core powers, if you will, of, of certain superheroes? And we try to say, well, okay, the, the gold aspect, that's obviously key to the whole concept. How can we infuse the idea of gold into a superhero? So, so we looked at, at, at various kinds of superheroes and the natural evolution then moved us into film noir, being the, the classic idea of, of crime, the classic idea of mystery, um, and the combination of the two seemed to, to gel very nicely as a, as a creative idea. We created, with a trend analyst, Dion Chang, we created four sets of characters based on typical South African and African stereotypes, the kind of people that South Africans will instantly recognize, and we wanted to create a gold relevance for them and design gold jewelry that they would wear and that they would appreciate. One was Extreme Street and the Futurist, who are very global thinking, new thinking, younger consumers who are quite familiar with the streets and know where the world is going but do not feel they need to conform to the norms of society. We then had the Hip Hop Homeboy and Jabulani Bond. Hip Hop Homeboy is a township dwelling hip hop lover. Jabulani Bond is an upwardly mobile action man, business leader, business entrepreneur who, uh, who draws a lot from the James Bond philosophy but, 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 but is proudly black and is very much a uh, part of South Africa. Both of these characters draw very much on influence from the US but r retain strong African roots. Next up we have the suburban set. We have the old money honey and the pampered princess, her daughter. They go very well together and they present a fairly universal suburban image. Then last up we have the money money set, the really rich set which is the black gold prince who is a stupendously wealthy African who has made his money in, in resources or in oil, mining perhaps, and his counterpart the gold digger who is super beautiful, super sexy, very shrewd and cunning but she makes no pretense about what she's after. She's after the richest man with the most money who will give her what she wants. We looked a lot towards Frank Miller who created Sin City because he, he also used Phil Noir as his inspiration and created something which is a very stylish, very high contrast, a lot of white on black and those kind of things. He basically inspired us to combine the idea of superheroism and a graphic novel and as well as the Phil Noir inspiration into the final campaign. And I saw a lot of potential in the project. It just seemed like something really interesting to work on. 
On a personal level, I think we've just always wanted to work with this, with this fantastic photographer. He has an extreme um, eye for, for detail, uh, a master of lighting, um, and, and his conceptual thinking. He, um, we, we, we would sit around a table and, and the, the creativity uh, would flow um, very, very easily. I researched general 40s and 50s film noir and then based it on typical good guy versus villain thriller. Obviously the lighting was very important to pull off that feel, but more important than that I think was the Sin City reference.